All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. The discussion starts right now. Like I mentioned, International Youth Day is tomorrow, but we're having this discussion a day earlier because tomorrow happens to be on a Saturday. The theme this year is Green Skills for Youth Towards a Sustainable World. But we're talking about the bigger conversation around the young people. Have they been included enough? Have they been empowered enough? What more needs to be done? Do they hold each other's hands or are they beholden to the powers that have given them those same opportunities that they have today? Is there something they need to do differently considering they're the majority of the population? There are also quite a number of people who say youth are not homogeneous. They are different. They come from different companies and different backgrounds. And also their thought process is different. But I'd like to hear from you mostly at Trevor Mbidi at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. Joining me in studio is now Jennifer Gidu, anti-corruption specialist at the UNODC. Thank you so much for making time. Philip Pande is here, youth inclusion advisor. Thank you very much for making time. We're still waiting for Honorable AC Okenyuri, nominated senator. Honorable Umulhar Harun, nominated. Nominated MP and Anthony Buluma, CEO of Kenya Young Parliamentarians Association. As soon as they come in, we'll drop them into the discussion, but we'll start right now. And I'll start with you, uh, Jen. You're the first one who was here. Every time we mark the International Youth Day, the conversation remains the same. Have the youth been included enough? And what more needs to be done? Have they been included enough? Or, and if not, what more needs to be done? Well, thank you, Trevor, for inviting me here today. Um, I think I'd like to begin by saying that uh, this is about the 23rd year that we are commemorating the International Youth Day following um, uh, the General Assembly uh, resolution, that's the UNGA resolution in 1999 that adopted the recommendation by the uh, World Council of Ministers to actually recognize uh, 12th August as uh, International Youth Day. Now this day gives us uh, an opportunity, one, to reflect on the things that you're saying, whether youth, the youth have been included enough, and two, to also uh, take action and, um, and make the appropriate steps to ensure that that inclusion is appropriate. So for us and for Kenya specifically, this is commemorated as a week, a week full of uh, activities, you know, ranging from issues around climate change, entrepreneurship for young people, um, uh, issues around politics and leadership inclusion, and so on and so forth. And um, for us, especially at uh, the UN uh, community of, of, of nations, what we do is engage young people as stakeholders, as partners in our work, and as, uh, as, as, as proper architects or powerful architects for change. But you still haven't answered whether they are included enough or not. Well, I think that's a yes and no answer. Um, I think we've seen uh, significant progress yeah. uh, since that time. Okay. We've seen more young people in political spaces. And for Kenya, we've seen that. There, you know, I know I'm sitting here with nominated members of parliament and nominated senators. We've seen more uh, uh, representation on that front. In the private sector as well, we've seen more representation of young people coming up as entrepreneurs, as, um, uh, as change makers, and also in the social spaces. So there has been an incremental uh, change towards that. Yeah. Of course, there's still a lot to be done. There's a lot of room for improvement. Yeah. What we're talking about right now is meaningful involvement of young people mm -hmm. to ensure that, uh, as they like to say, <clears throat> Yeah. Um, uh, they're, they're not just on the menu or they're not just, uh, you know, on the table, yeah. but they're also properly included. So that's what the, that's the discussion we're having. And particularly for this year's uh, conversation, we were talking about green skills for young people, yeah. ensuring that young people are involved in the discussions around climate change, around um, ensuring that we have environmentally friendly uh, approaches and processes in our, in our continent. We're talking about... Um, the questions, do young people understand what are green skills? Mm. What are the processes and attitudes that we need to adopt? Because we are transitioning into a green world. Yeah. We're talking about greening, even in the justice sector, in the judiciary. You saw the other day, uh, the Chief Justice, you know, uh, launching the green uh, justice initiatives. Do young people uh, properly understand what's, what's going on? And are we in touch mm. with the changes that we have? So there's a lot to discuss. There's a lot to, you know, to also be, uh, uh, improved upon but I could say that since that time um, we have observed there has been an increased um, engagement of young people. Okay. Yeah. Pande, do you agree? Has there been an increased engagement and is it meaningful involvement like uh, Jennifer says? Thank you Trevor. Uh, very good morning to our viewers. Um, I'll start by saying that um, the global crisis in the youth space can be best described by the words of Martin Luther King. 
Eddie said that we are faced by the fact that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with the fears agency of now. In this un uh, unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is no such thing as being too late. This is not a time for apathy or complacency. It is time for positive action. And positive action on the part of the youth themselves, positive action by actors in the space, positive action by government and all stakeholders. So collectively, there is need to relook into youth inclusion holistically. Uh, in our country, like um, uh, my colleague says, and like you rightly remark, there is a challenge of inclusion. There is a challenge of meaningful youth participation in government, in livelihood, in economic production, in employment opportunity. And one of the crises that uh, Africa, for example, is battling with, we are talking about a global population of, say, 1.2 billion, 16% of the global population is aged between 17 to 24. And 40% of Africa's population is below uh, the age of 15. So if you come back home, then we're also talking about a population of 79% that is predominantly below the age of 35. Yet the opportunities um, mainly are skewed towards um, a, a quarter that is about 3.9, which is 60 plus. So in our action from you know, uh, cabinet, ministerial, uh, semi-autonomous government agencies, sub-national governments, which are counties, and even in other spaces of, of employment, of um, development, there is a need to improve the youth quota. And Trevor, we are not talking about a country that is devoid of youth inclusion strategies. I could name a litany of youth inclusion policies, right from the Basic Education Act to the National Youth Development Policy in 2019 to the Sports uh, Act and many as such. So this is a country that is full of legislation, both primary and secondary leg legislation in terms of inclusion. And studies, uh, Trevor, show globally that Two out of every uh, country, uh, I mean two out of every three countries in the world have a sense of youth policy or youth inclusion strategies. But in terms of implementation, that's where we fail. So Kenya, just like her neighbors, her peers in the, across the globe, are failing in the aspect of meaningful implementation and inclusion of young people. And that's the crisis still today. Okay. Joining us now is Honorable S.C. Okenyuri, nominated Senator, and Honorable Humulher Harun, nominated MP. Thank you so much for making time. And Honorable Harun, I'll start with you on this. Are the young people included enough in your perspective? Um, thank you, Trevor, and uh, thank you for having me on again. The question of inclusion I think should be a subject that comes after. How far have we supported young people? Before you include young people, there has to be a process and a journey that we go through. Now, if you look at the structures of this country, and I'll be honest, and generally I think Africa at large, we are still struggling. Even in the concept of preparing young people for the job market, for the opportunity, the trends are changing. This is a fourth industrial revolution. Uh, things are going digital. You know, the the normal working or you know the normal how do i say jobs or mainstream jobs that we are aware of are actually shifting but if you look at the preparation of our country we are not yet there so inclusion can't be a discussion we can have when we have not even prepared the young people for this changes and what do i mean by this if you look at our for example right from our education system we it's always go, uh, education i mean uh, result oriented like i think jennifer would understand her and i went to the same high school it has always been the same thing you know get that grade it has to it's all about the a at the end of the day then you get the a then what next you have graduates all over you don't have the opportunity for them but in other countries especially in the more developed world they prepare their young people for skills right from the start and there's a joke we always hear around where Kenyans are being taught 
parts of grasshoppers while in China, their kids are learning about computers and everything. That's where we are. So we need to actually look at the system right from the word go. We can't talk of inclusion when you're already 20 or 30 but, and you haven't been prepared for this because the nine to five jobs that our parents did is not what we fancy as millennials or Gen Z. We don't want that. We need something that gives us flexibility. We are all about mental health today. We are all about, you know, um, uh, having less toxic workspaces. But those are the things that are available. So even when the opportunities come, as a young person, you're being told, you know, you have to work these hours. This is the money I give you. That be like, you know what? I'd rather not. Okay. So. We need to have the conversation about changing the narrative right from the start so that we can even talk inclusion. I think for me, that's the perspective I have. That's a very interesting perspective, yeah. Arun. And preparation, how do you prepare a generation when the goalpost itself keeps shifting? Because is this then a cultural issue? Because even right now, when a young person tells a parent that they want to be a YouTube influencer, exactly. do they understand what that is? They don't. Actually, the parents don't understand. But you see, the YouTubers who are making more money than some of us who are seated in offices. Yeah. Like you've heard of the tax issue, the digital tax. You hear influencers taking home up to three, four million in a month. The TikTok lives are posting crazy money to a point where you start questioning, okay, am I in the right field? So it's it's about, and that's what I mean, in our schools, the parents were told lawyers are the thing, doctors are the thing. Career guidance is talk about that. But today, if you call a doctor to come and mentor children, and that doctor took years to be posted in that hospital, really, is there anything inspirational there? Because we have all these people all over. But the conversation should be, now invite this new, they're called the emerging careers. Yeah. Invite them to schools, let them have this conversation so that the parents also get to hear. Not just TikTokers or YouTubers, but all these opportunities out there. If a parent from where I come from sees me seated in the house throughout the week, but I'm telling them I'm, I'm, I'm still working, my job is online, that parent wouldn't understand, they'd be like, no, 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 why are you not going to office? Yeah. Are you making illegal money? You know, all those doubts come up. So yeah. it's a whole conversation, it's a cultural issue, even as a country, it's something we need to start, you know, having with both the parents, the students, the career guidance counselors and everybody. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Honorable Kenyuri, what are your thoughts on this? What does meaningful inclusion look like from your perspective? Uh, thank you, Trevor, and good morning to the viewers. I think uh, quite an interesting conversation. And for, uh, I, I personally think we've quite made some uh, progresses, especially when it comes to inclusion, it might not be so much measurable really, but there, ha there have been milestones in that sector. And maybe I'd start by saying as young people, whether in the legislative houses or out there, we need to unite. Uniting not only to discuss, but to take action. Because we've been discussing for quite some time now. And I think it's time we took action. Trevor, if I take you back to the 2022 elections, I think this country for the first time is witnessing the largest number of young legislators elected in both the National Assembly and the Senate. When you even look at uh, some of the departments have, uh, in this current government have managed to include young people, I'm one of the beneficiaries of such kind of affirmative action because I represent young people with a rural background who have actually managed to show what they can offer and have been, been given that platform. Because if you give a young person that platform and the opportunity, they're surely going to exceed your expectations. So I would say as a country, we are yet to get there, but quite a, a wide range of improvement uh, unlike past, uh, past instances. Another issue, uh, this actually will even confront our political conversations going forward. I believe and uh, from, from the trends we are currently seeing, in 2027 we are going to face more radical, more informed young people who are able to stand and make decisions on their own. Look at some of the videos we watch on TikTok, on Facebook, on Twitter. They display young people who already know what their rights are, what they want from the table. 
and this for me is a good thing. I've been pushing for, uh, I'm currently drafting the civic education bill, the county civic education bill, because I believe an informed citizenry is able to make decisions on their own and be able to take their leaders into account of their actions. Because the young people now do not want more of the, those discussions. Young people now want to take these spaces. Okay. That's why people like me rose uh, through the party structure. I've been working actively in the party structure. Yeah. Why am I bringing this perspective, Trevor? We might talk widely about these issues out here, but young people must get into those spaces. For the ones who want to pursue political leadership, you have to exercise whatever you're good at in the party structure, grow through the party structure, then transit to either elective politics or be in the party or be nominated or do policies for whatever side you're in. And you have to be in that table for you to make decisions or influence decisions in your favor. But just uh, believing that you as a young person uh, will do it on your own will really be a hard task. Okay. That's what I'm saying we have to unite, yeah. whether for the ones who are elected, for the ones who are out there. When it comes to youth issues, we have to speak in one voice. Okay. So Trevor, we've made quite some improvement. And uh, take cue from this government. We have several of our young people who, are, who participated in the spaces and even the ones who are not in the political, uh, political leadership, they are having an environment which favors them to do whatever they are doing best. Okay. So we as young people need to carry the vision of our, the, the leaders who've come before us. Because now, sometimes I get afraid, uh, the patriotism we used to see mm -hmm. is slowly dying away, which shouldn't be the case. Because Trevor, the first thing as a Kenyan, you should really love your country to an extent. You do not want to participate or be used in uh, matters that actually degrade you as an individual mm -hmm. and your country where you belong and a country where you love so much. Yeah. That's why it really pains me seeing innocent, ordinary young people be used by political factions in the streets, later lose their lives. And these are young people like myself okay. who would otherwise have done any other thing that would see them grow into great people in this country. And yet there are some young people who are saying if you people were elected mm -hmm. on their behalf, represented mm -hmm. their views mm -hmm. well enough and talked mm -hmm. about the issues mm -hmm. that are facing them, they wouldn't mm -hmm. have to go. To and this. by the way, uh, elected, uh, young people who are elected have no monopoly of doing that on their own. I've always encouraged young people in all platforms I speak. When you have a proposal which you think makes sense, because even my colleague Umi here wouldn't have the monopoly of ideas she's trying to prosecute in the National Assembly. Please bring those uh, proposals and we can be your voices and push collectively. Do you have the backing or are you beholden to the power? Let me, let me, tell, you, let me tell you, Trevor, even in the Senate, you'll not push an idea like, you know, you, you can't come and say you're pushing an idea as a young person because even our numbers there, in as much as uh, uh, they have increased from the past uh, parliament, but the moment you take the approach of pushing as a youth or a woman, you're losing it before you even begin. You have to look at uh, angles where you can actually converge with the rest yeah. for them to buy your idea. Isn't that where the problem really is? And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. You can't push an issue. It's like now saying, I need to be elected because I'm a woman. That's not an achievement. Mm. You have to come up with something different which actually convinces the other people to buy in your idea. Mm. The approach is very critical because we might be communicating the same language but in different ways. Okay. So your approach must be very tactical for you to buy in people slowly and before they realize you've already gotten away with what you wanted. Okay, the issue yeah. is the representation and that's an interesting conversation. I know Pande has something to say and Umi as well and Jen, but we'll come back to that in just a bit. Let's take a quick break when you come back. We're continuing this conversation around the International Youth Day. How are they represented enough? Is there meaningful representation? That's a question and what then should be done? At Trevor Mbidja at Citizen TV Kenya, use the hashtag Daybreak. We'll see you shortly.